Hey, it's your girl Sarah back to talk about autoimmune hepatitis. And thanks y'all for all your positive support as I went through the COVID. I am now week three post day zero. Definitely felt better. So as an update, I took molnupiravir, certainly helped. And then I felt better for about five or six days. And then I got COVID rebound. So Rebound is a function of COVID. It's not related to Paxlovid or Molnupiravir or any of those. What is happening is that the body mounts a too strong of a response. And even though the amount of the virus in the body is um, lessening for most people, the immune system kicks back into gear. So you get a lot of the symptoms that you do, which is your immune system preparing again for another round. So you can probably hear, sorry, I have a cat wandering around somewhere. You can probably hear I'm still congested. I had a chest cough. The chest cough is finally gone, which feels nice. So be safe out there. Um, COVID impacts everybody differently. It's not a joke. It's not a joke for me. Pretty crummy, but thankful for a job that I can work remotely and take sick time when needed. So I was hopping on here for just one thing, which is to talk about kind of where am I ending the year with my autoimmune hepatitis. Um, if you go back six, seven months, I didn't even know that I had autoimmune hepatitis. There were some markers for the liver that were concerning. And after continuing to monitor those, then I um, got my liver biopsy and my diagnosis. I met my hepatologist, got my first fiber scan, and then started medication. Azathioprine, azathioprine, people pronounce it differently. Um, and have been working to manage it ever since. So I'm thankful because I'm actually ending the year with good news. I hope to get my blood draw, as I heard with some of y'all, um, right before American Thanksgiving, but then I got COVID. So yesterday, I finally had the opportunity to go to um, the lab and get my blood draw just to see where things were. And for the first time that we know of this year, my AST and ALT are, are normal. Oh my gosh, it's so exciting. I didn't even know what these things were six, seven months ago. And now I can look, I pulled up my results and they're both in the 30s, which if you're trying it's really good, 35 and 38. That means the azathioprine's working um, and it's also suppressing my immune system, COVID, but it's working. So, oh, <laughs> it's definitely a huge Huge relief, huge relief. Um, yeah, that's the update. That's literally the update. Um, I've learned a lot about myself through this process, not to mention the liver. So I'm really excited in the new year, I'll get to go in and get another fiber scan, um, get to meet again with my gastroenterologist, my hepatologist, hoping that everything's tracking so that we can just continue this treatment. Um, I'm not even thinking beyond that. Right now it's working. I know these numbers are gonna fluctuate, uh, but they're in the normal ranges, they're in the 30s. Uh, so that makes me really, really excited. So um, if you're in a different place in this journey, keep working, keep working, keep making good behavior changes. There is not a lot we can do sometimes with an autoimmune disorder, but I will say another thing that I've done is just continue to maintain healthy habits. Try to be in a good sleep schedule. It helped a lot once I started the medication because I was struggling with insomnia before, um, and then for whatever reason, I don't, I don't know how. It could just be mentally. I felt relieved that I was treating this, but I was able to sleep better. Um, just eating foods that make you feel good. I'm not gonna tell you what to eat. There's no particular diet for for AIH, um, but just you know, eat foods that give you energy and make you feel good. It is the holiday season. I love me some Christmas cookies. I'm going to be having Christmas cookies. Um, and I'm just trying to eat healthy. Move your body in a way that feels good to you. Um, doesn't really matter what it is. Is it walking? Is it biking? Is it yoga? Is it Tai Chi? Doesn't matter. Just, you know, these are these are things that keep you grounded. Um, for me, and I don't talk about this a lot because this gets like in, in a place where I was very resistant to this, but I do meditate now. And there have been some pain meditations that have been really, really helpful when I was in a lot of pain earlier in this. Um, and then the, the, the biggest lifestyle choice we can make for our liver is just not to drink. 
So, and, and in this case, like take medications. So Tylenol, that was actually really tricky during COVID. I had these really bad headaches and my guidance from my hepatologist and talk to yours. I'm not a doctor, just a lady, um, is no more than mm, four Tylenol a week. And that was really, really hard because I had a really bad headache. Um, and I just did a lot of sleeping. So that was not fun. I did not like that. But knowing that things like Tylenol or um, a lot of alcohol that can negatively impact the liver, um, it's not that I'm never going to drink again. It doesn't give me an opportunity. It's not that I'm in a lot of pain. I shouldn't take a Tylenol. To me, and this is kind of like an insight into my work and what I do, a lot of our habits are just little building blocks. So I feel the same way with the liver as I do with any of the other things I've managed with my health. It's just little consistent steps might help. And it might not. That's the really annoying thing is you can be doing all the right things and it's still not working the way that you want. So like love to you as well. I have not obviously filmed, thanks COVID, um, the video that I wanted to do around supplements, but I do have them here and I've been reading about them. Um, <clears throat> like biocidin, we're going to be talking about this one and binders and why... I never have taken these, but I bought them. We'll talk about how much money I wasted on things that have no impact on my liver because I am supplement free other than a multivitamin and my liver's back into the normal range. So we're going to talk about stuff that you'll hear people say, things like milk thistle, and maybe it's good for you, maybe it's not. Digestive bitters. I was on this one for a while because there was a thought that I had a gallbladder problem. Anyway, stay tuned. Part two of that's coming. If you if you haven't seen part one, I'll link it down below. Check that out. And then the last thing I'm going to do is give a plug. It is the end of the year. Um, and the AIHA, the Autoimmune Hepatitis Association, is a nonprofit that's focused on providing support to patients and families of people with autoimmune hepatitis. I shared in a, uh, in a video before, they, we have a meeting with the FDA in January, which is really exciting because that's talking about getting treatments or research specifically for AIH. As I said before, the medications and treatments we use are for autoimmune diseases more broadly, um, or like the medication that I'm taking is for um, people so they don't re uh, reject an organ transplant. They're, there's nothing really for us. And so the AIHA is working towards that. I made a donation this holiday season. I also fundraised for my birthday in November. So if you would like to donate to the AIHA, I'll put that link below. Many companies will match your donation. That's fantastic. It's a small organization. They have one paid employee um, who is Erin and she's great. Um, but I'm also looking at this. There's also a really cool opportunity for you to register as a patient with the AIHA. And the reason behind that is that then that puts you in a patient pool. This allows them to take your data um, and use that because since it's a rare disease, we need to collect data from those of us that have AIH. So sign up for that. It also, um, in filling out these questionnaires, which I still have to do, so I can share a little bit more in my next update, but it also checks your um, eligibility for future clinical trials. And I love that idea. I love that we're trying to find treatments for people who are treatment resistant, or who knows, there might be a day when my treatment doesn't work for me. So we are a small group of folks who um, I think as people with AIH that we really appreciate support of everyone else. But also if you have this sign up, um, come to a support group meeting for yourself or someone in your family, you're going to learn a lot and you're going to have community and you're going to feel a lot less alone. So it's the end of the year, donate if you would like to, or at least as a patient, go and register if you'd like to, um, to, to just contribute to the community. Um, the more of us that contribute, the more data they'll have and a better story we'll have to explain why we want to have better drugs and therapies for us, which is really exciting. So I will be back before the end of the year. It'll probably be after Christmas, maybe in the new year, as I finish all of my work about um, holistic stuff, supplements, etc. part two. Thanks for listening. Um, thanks y'all for your support. Be happy, be healthy. Chat soon. Bye.